the recent JW broadcasting for November 2015 got me to thinking. They're making calls about how urgent it is for people to come into a Jehovah's organization, so I thought I would share how urgent it was to come into Jehovah's organization when I was a child growing up. And it was a year or two ago, I had a conversation with somebody, talking about the expectations that we had back then, and that person said, oh, I know that some people believe that the end was going to come sooner than it was. And I said, well, actually, that's what was published in the literature. And so what I'm going to do is back that point up. So put yourself in the position of a child that was about four or five years old at the start of this event. So let's go through what I was raised with in Jehovah's organization. First book we have here is Let Your Kingdom Come. If you would like to see the copyright date of this material, it is 1981. Cold War is in full sway. And here is the spiritual food coming forth from Jehovah's Organization. Paragraph 33 on page 140 says, In Jesus' day, some of the disciples who heard his words and the others of his contemporaries survived to live through the final tribulation on the Jewish system of things. They were the generation of Jesus' time. At this writing, in the United States alone, there are more than 10 million persons still living who are old enough to observe a beginning of pangs of distress in 1914-18. to 18. Some of these may still survive quite a number of years. Yet Jesus assures us that before this generation passes away, he will come as Son of Man to execute judgment on Satan's system of things. We should keep awake, expectant of that coming kingdom. So that was 1981. They're expecting the end because people that saw the events of 1914 and 1918 were very old. Now another book I've shared many times, You Can Live Forever in Paradise on Earth. And again, the date of publication of this book, 1982. And here we are, page 154. There's that little illustration down there, paragraph 8. After drawing attention to the many things that have marked the period from 1914 onward, Jesus said, This generation will by no means pass away until all these things, including the end of this system, occur. Which generation did Jesus mean? He meant the generation of people who were living in 1914. These persons, oh, those persons, yet remaining of that generation, are now very old. However, some of them will still be alive to see the end of this wicked system. So of this we can be certain. Shortly now, there will be a sudden end to all wickedness and wicked people at Armageddon. In the caption on the picture, Armageddon, some of the generation living in 1914 will see the end of this system of things and survive it. Do you detect any uncertainty there? I certainly don't. Well, let's move along. Organized to accomplish our ministry. This book has been revised several times since this particular version came out. This one came out 1983 was revised in 1989 and on page 25 we're going to be reading some information sorry if you can't see this i know it's kind of an awkward angle but the last paragraph on page 25 says unity is maintained by loyally recognizing the headship of christ and also by submitting to an organizational channel the faithful and discreet slave what has the master appointed the slave to do Jesus answered that the slave was to provide spiritual food at the proper time and to care for all his belongings or kingdom interests on earth. So, Jesus Christ, according to this, directly appointed the faithful and discreet slave to provide spiritual food at the proper time. And we're getting a very clear picture of what that spiritual food is. Now, another book. United on Worship of the Only True God. You can see how beat up it is. This was my study copy. Way back when I was a youngin'. There we are, 1983. So how are we to view the spiritual food provided to us? So this is the last paragraph on 23 in the beginning of 24. Under the heading, Our Personal Bible Reading. So... He talks about the Ethiopian eunuch, and it says, So he could help the Ethiopian to benefit from the instruction that Jehovah was making available through that organization. Similarly, today, 
Who of us arrived at a clear and correct understanding of Jehovah's purposes on his own? On the contrary, we needed, and we continue to need, the aid that Jehovah lovingly provides through his visible organization. So, they're telling us that the teachings that they're giving us are coming from Jehovah, and he is providing it through his organization. So let's go to another book. Survival into a New Earth. What year does this bring us to? For those of you George Orwell fans, 1984. And this is on page 28. There's a nice little chart next to it about 1914. So at this point, you get the point that the society is getting just a little bit desperate to explain their position. So paragraph 15, page 28. It is true that statistics indicate that the average life expectancy on a global basis is now only 60 years, but millions of persons live beyond that age. According to available statistics, in 1980, approximately 250 million of those who were alive in 1914 were still living. That generation is not yet gone. Interestingly, however, of those born in 1900 or earlier, figures published by the United Nations indicate that only an estimated 35 million 316,000 were still alive in 1980. So the number drops quickly as individuals reach their 70s and 80s. When considering, uh, considered along with all the decades of Jesus' prophetic sign, these facts strongly indicate that the end is near. In verse 16, now is not the time to be apathetic. It is a time to act with urgency. So for those of you counting, that was 31 years ago that we should act with urgency because people around in 1914 were dying off at a fast pace. Well, I believe it was, let me look at the date here. Yes, 1985, we got this gem. This is basically the society's instruction manual for how to witness at the door. This is an original copy, 1985. So what do they say about 1914? This is under the subheading dates, starting on page 97. When will the end of this wicked world come? Jesus answered, Concerning that day and hour, nobody knows, neither the angels of the heavens nor the Son, but only the Father. However, he also stated, Truly I say to you that this generation that was alive when the sign of the last days began its fulfillment will by no means pass away until all these things occur. Also, after telling of the events that would follow the establishment of the kingdom in the hands of Christ Jesus, excuse me, Jesus Christ, in 1914, Revelation 12, 12 adds, Be glad, you heavens, and you who reside in them. Woe for the earth and for the sea, because the devil has come down to you, having great anger, knowing he has a short period of time. Well, I guess my definition of short is a little bit different than their definition of short. Anyways, let's continue. True peace and security. How can you find it? When was this book published? 1986. So, let's go to page 84. can't tell if I'm getting what I want to on the thing there. Anyways, this is on the subheading starting on page 83, entitled, This Generation Will Not Pass Away. So, I'll start in the middle of the paragraph. It says, This means that some persons who observed the events of 1914, when the conclusion of the system of things began, would still be alive to see its end when the Great Tribulation strikes. Those who remember the events of 1914 are getting up in years now. Most of their number have already died. But Jesus assured us that this generation will by no means pass away before destruction of this wicked system of things comes. But Jesus assured us. I'm going to see if I can highlight that. Sorry. Jesus assured us. Does that sound to you like it's uncertain in any way, shape, or form? No, I, I didn't think so. Anyways, so what are they teaching at this point as regards to who they are? This book, Worldwide Security Under the Prince of Peace, came out nineteen 
1986. Here on page 144, not page 144,000, you see chapter 18, Loyalty to God's Visible Organization Today. So we're supposed to be loyal to God's organization, which according to what we've been taught, has been entrusted by Christ to give us spiritual food at the proper time. So in the 1980s, by the time that last book came out, I was somewhere around 10 years old, not quite 10, but they were teaching beyond the shadow of a doubt that the generation that saw the events of 1914 would not pass away until the end came. We were told that Jesus Christ had appointed them, that they were giving us food at the proper time, spiritual food at the proper time. However, was what they foretold or predicted in those books correct? Was it ever correct? Was it even remotely close to being correct? Was it presented as not being certain, just a possibility? Keep in mind now, this is Jehovah's organization that put these things in print. So, you can see that 30 years ago, it was urgent because a generation was dying out. They admitted in the literature how old they are. And 30 years hence, those people in their 70s or 80s, if they were alive, there might be a few of them, would be over 100 years old. So, that generation is all but gone. And Jesus said the generation would by no means pass away. So, by no means indicates that there would have to be more than just a couple of that generation left. Anyway, I just thought I would share that and give the weight of evidence as for our great spiritual heritage, because Jehovah's Witnesses indeed like to talk of their spiritual heritage. But the funny thing is they talk about it, but then they enjoy hiding the literature that shows what that heritage really is. Uh, in fact, try going to get some writings of Charles Taze Russell. Try getting some of Joseph Rutherford's writings. Try getting watchtowers and awakes that are older. Try getting awakes from the 1960s. There was an awake in 1969 that told children of that age, and that happens to be talking to my parents, said that they would never complete a career before this system ended. Well, my parents are pretty much at retirement age. So anyways, that is the wonderful spiritual heritage that Jehovah's organization has provided. And the further back you look in history, the more of the same you find with predictions and expectations, whatever you want to call them, that have not come true, but that were written and printed by Jehovah's organization, and that if you wanted to be part of that organization, you had to agree with, you had to believe, and you had to preach. So, that's my video for this time.